Hello everybody, we're back in the shop again today and we've got an M38 radiator shroud here on the bench. Uh, you saw in the previous pictures uh, we're making a special die to make a certain bend on this thing and the radiator is out at the radiator shop right now uh, being record. Uh, hopefully we get good news back and the tanks and everything are going to be in good shape. But um, I've got to make a shroud. And you can see this one's kind of chewed up on the bottom. And this was from a viewer that sent uh, this radiator in. And uh, we're going to try and get them fixed up here. Uh, I've got this shroud in the four different pieces that it is. And we're going to flatten this out and make a uh, pattern. A little pattern development. We're just going to... Uh, Flatten that out, trace it out, uh, same thing on the top. You can see we've got a real close bend here. And that's what that die is going to be for. I'll show you how that works in the press brake. We can make that, that real tight bend there, back to back, reverse bend, if you will. And then we'll get some tipping dies out and we'll, uh, we'll tip this flange up here. And we'll get everything put back together. Uh, in certain areas it was spot welded together. In other areas it was soldered together. And then the whole unit was soldered onto the radiator. So uh, we'll probably put it back original. You could see in this area here. I thought it was spot welded, but they had soldered that joint right there. But, uh, well, spot weld it where it originally was and solder the same way. But um, on this cardboard, I hope you can see in the red there, I just made some, some basic lines. So I got the, uh, the rough size of this thing. And I think you can see I've got some red marks where the bead goes on the outside and inside and where the flange goes and then we'll curve this over on the shrinker and I'll take you along and show you how it goes and uh, and how everything gets made on this shroud okay I'll start cutting some blanks out and be right back with you okay guys you've seen me do this a bunch of times we've got some 26 gauge material on the bench and that's what the original shroud is made out of. And I've got the pieces flattened out. We got the bead profile uh, already established before we flattened it out. And we're just going to trace around there with a scribe. Get our blanks cut out. And this one we'll put through the slip roll. This one we'll put a flange on and we'll go over to the kick shrinker and get that into shape. And then we'll put the beads on afterwards. And we'll make all our cutouts where we need them and our little tabs where we need to have them. And little details uh, where this gets bent in two different directions. And we'll put all that in now and um, we'll get these uh, top and bottom pieces made. So I'll get them cut out and uh, I'll show you the steps for putting the beads in and uh, kick shrinking that thing around to shape. Okay, be right back with you. Alright, here we are with some blanks cut out for the top and bottom. And you can see we got the holes where they need to be. There we go. We got all our little details in there. Little cutouts in the side, little tab in the center of the top one. And we're just about ready to start shaping those. I've got some sheet metal uh, blued up over there. We'll make the side panel patterns and we'll start putting this thing together. And I think just a little while ago I told you this was 26 gauge. Uh, that's a mistake. I was building some ductwork for a uh, furnace that was 26 gauge. I got a little confused there. Uh, this is actually uh, 31 thousandths and uh, it works out to be 22 gauge. So I've got some 22 gauge here, and that's what this was made out of originally. Not the 26 like I said earlier. 
uh, just get my projects mixed up here but um, <clears throat> this is a little bit heavier stuff and uh, 22 gauge but no problem at all we could still uh, bend and shape that easily it's, it's no big deal so I will continue on cutting out the side blanks and we'll get putting this thing together okay there's our bottom piece and we just put that in the brake put a half inch lip on it at 90 degrees and you see here's our piece of cardboard where we took some notes before we started so now we know we have to get this curved to this shape here so let's head over to the kick shrinker and we will shrink that little flange around and, and work this wide section and uh, we'll start to get that bent around to that perfect curve that we need so we'll just do a little bit and then we'll keep testing it on the on the um, pattern here and we'll just go back and forth until we have it bent around there perfectly okay here we are over at the kick shrinker and we got our shrink jaws in here uh, you can put stretching jaws in there too but uh, I use I use this mainly for shrinking and we'll put our piece in there and we'll gently start to bring it around make that happen nice nice and even that's light sheet metal so it moves real fast and you can see in just a little bit how much curve we got in that already so we'll just keep sneaking up on it little by little testing it and uh, and shrinking so we don't over shrink and we'll just keep working that until we get the the, the perfect shape that we need Okay, there's our bottom piece, and I think, if I can get you in there, I think you can see we're sitting on that red line perfectly. We've still got to put the end detail in there, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to put the bead in there next. And that is just right on the red line there. So that's where we're going to leave that. And we're going to come over here to just a small... Texto hand crank machine and I've got some dies made for it this was originally this is a Pexto 585 this is originally used for putting the bead and the crimp on the end of stove pipe and uh, there's a couple of crimping wheels there and I took the crimping wheels off and put a spacer in here and I had some extra dies and I reshape them for the bead that we need so this is what we're going to use to roll that small bead in the bottom and the top and I'll run a sample piece through and show you what that looks like then we'll run the, uh, the, the, the proper piece through there once we know that we've got our guide set up right so uh, let's run a sample piece through next okay I think I got you in there okay uh, the, tripod, the tripod I'm using is kind of going to hell right now and I've got it just wired together so uh, I'm hoping that the, the shot comes out okay. We've got our upper and lower die here and we could adjust the tension on that like that. And we'll just start out real light tension. We'll just make a sample bead here. We're up against our stop here and we'll just roll that through to see what it looks like. I hope you can see that okay. It's not too bad. We'll make it a little bit deeper. And that's what the finished bead is going to look like and that's just like the original. And the light's kind of crazy right now. I'm trying to get some light on there keep the camera on the rolls but um, that's what that looks like on a flat sheet and then I just made a sample here on a on a curved piece 
and the bead profile comes out real nice. So we're all set up. We'll run the, the real piece through there now. And um, i, I got to lay out the start and the stop because it doesn't go all the way to the end. So I'll get that laid out and I'll be right back with you. Okay, we just got a small line through there now. Alignment looks good. And we'll put a little more pressure this time. Okay, so you see the bead starting to go in there. We'll just keep working that a little bit at a time. Better to creep up on it than kink the metal or do anything like that. So we're just going to keep putting that bead in there. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, there's our finished bead. And we went nice and slow. We don't have any panel distortion or anything. That's the outside. There's the inside. And I think you can see it still fits our layout line real good. Right on the money. So that's how we put the bead in. That's how we uh, shrink it around and get the curve in it. On the top one, there's no flange on it, so we're just going to run that one through the slip roll get the right radius on it and then we're going to put a bead in the same exact way Okay, we're still moving along on this uh, M38 fan shroud. This is the left side. And we got it flattened out. <coughs> Made a pattern of that. <coughs> and if you look on your radiator, there's a uh, double bend right down here. And I got that bent on this on this panel here before I do anything else to it. We've got, we've, we've got to tip this edge up here and do a bend on the top and bottom and the long one here. But um, it's easier to get that bend in there now. And that's what you saw when I was making those dies. Um, that's a uh, basically a double bend die. And those that I was making are made out of uh, ultra high molecular weight uh, plastic and they have incredible um, strength and you can use them for press break dies and a lot of other hammer forms and things like that they they last for short runs and and you could do light sheet metal and you know I've done some 18 gauge bends on that without any trouble but uh, you need something like that because on most breaks when you try and do a reverse bend like this uh, the minimum you're gonna get most uh, breaks the apron is half inch so uh, we've got a half inch here and we've only got five sixteenths here so we set up a special set of dies for it and here's another set of dies and I think you can see the angle there Show you what I got. You know they fit right in there, and you get that double bend. Now these <coughs> these particular ones, they don't have any wear on them or anything. I 
I probably run about a thousand pieces of aluminum through these and they're still like like new and they still make nice crisp bends uh, I had to do that for a um, experimental aircraft project a guy was working on and he needed some some very specific bends and and that bent sixty thousandths aluminum uh, you know for a couple days there like I say over a thousand parts I did on those and they're still in good shape now the ones you saw me making on the mill it's the same material. You get this material in black or you get it in white. Uh, the, the supplier just had some black on the shelf, so that's what I grabbed. And um, I'll try and set up on the press brake there and show you how it works and, uh, and show you the, the bend it puts in there. Like I say, it's a nice crisp bend. Uh, it works real good. They're very easy to machine. Uh, you could just use uh, end mills. And you saw me making the 45 degree angle with a, it's actually a router bit I was using. Um, so they're easy to make and uh, they're not very expensive and you could make them and adjust them and tweak them a little bit they're they're very easy to do and, and like I say they make real nice bends so uh, let me see if I can get you set up over there okay guys got the press brake running and I've got a little scrap piece of material here and we'll go put that in those dies and I'll show you how easy you could uh, make some dies and make nice bends let me head over there now. Okay, I hope you're able to see that all right. These are just random bends, you know, the, the legs are too long on this, but uh, you get the idea how easy it is. And you can see how nice and sharp those bends are, nice and crisp. And that die will last for a very long time before it needs any kind of tuning up or anything. So that's the method I use to get those uh, offset bends in there when they're real tight. And you can make that you can make this, you know, extreme. You can make that a little eighth inch step there if you needed to. Uh, but that's just how I do it. It's quick and easy with the uh, with the ultra high molecular weight stuff. You'll find that as uh, UHMW uh, at any kind of industrial supply house or anything like that. And um, just have fun with it. And uh, you can make any kind of shape on that and use your press brake for pressing in little beads or doing anything. You can make any kind of dies you want. Just squeeze it together and you'll have some uh, some good luck with that material. Okay, let's keep moving on and uh, we'll get this shroud together. And I just want to show you real quick the tripod I've been using. It really is taking a beating here. I don't know if the camera's too heavy for it or it's just a junky one. I don't know too much about tripods or anything like that, but I got to keep it wired together I got to clamp the camera on there uh, anybody out there who's uh, familiar with cameras and tripods or anything and you know where I can get a, a good one uh, I don't know anything about them you see them all over the place the prices are all over the place I just got this junky one because I don't know too much about it and it broke immediately and the, everything's stripping out of it but if there's anybody out there knows anything about tripods where to get a pretty good one for not a whole crazy amount of money. Uh, shoot me a comment and let me know. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to hold the camera. But um, I'll keep wiring it up and stuff to get through this project. And uh, we'll keep moving on this shroud. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're continuing along with the uh, M38 shroud here. Uh, a few difficulties with the tripod yesterday, like I was saying. So... Uh, I can't prop the camera up, I just got to hold it. So I wasn't able to get you this flange that I tipped up on the left side. <clears throat> and when you have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when you have thin sheet metal uh, and you got to come up with a flange like that, 
Uh, coming up with a, that's an inch and a quarter flange. It needs quite a bit of stretching to get up to that 90 degree without distorting it. Anymore. Thin sheet metal and stretching is kind of tricky because it doesn't take much to damage it or tear it or anything. I did that in the planishing hammer with some stretching dies. <clears throat> uh, if you use a jaw type shrinker, it'll just spread it right apart. And this is uh, 22 gauge galvanized. And if you ever work with galvanized, you know it's a little harder than mild, mild steel. Um, the, gal the galvanizing process uh, makes it a little bit more hard and brittle. Um, but it works okay. Now I've got the other side bent up. We've got our little flange on the bottom. We've got the angle right. Uh, you can see that red line. That's what needs to be tipped up. And I've got my Pexto 622 unit here. And I've got some tipping dies for that. That you can, um, you can tip that flange up with some tipping dies. Uh, I try to sample in the flanger. And you've seen me use the flanger before if you've been following along. And that's a little tricky with, uh, with thin sheet metal as well. But that'll do it. And I know a bunch of you guys wouldn't have a flanger. So... Uh, you probably would uh, opt for tipping it so you know you're going to follow that carefully with your die then you're going to have to go over and you have to stretch all this material out all along this whole area here and I don't have a way to set the camera up right now but uh, I'll, sh I'll try and show you um, try and show you as the flange comes up how it gets stretched out and stuff uh, like I said, I don't have a good way to hold the camera, but uh, I'll try and get you some, some shots of that. But uh, the main thing to remember here is you absolutely have to stretch that out. It's a very big flange in very thin sheet metal, so uh, it's delicate. So um, and, it, and it takes some, some energy to stretch that. So like I say, the planishing hammer was the best way for me to do it. And um, we'll just move on to tipping this flange up, and then we'll... Uh, We'll get this thing mocked up and, uh, and see what it looks like as a completed shroud. Okay, hang in there with me. I'll be right back with you. Okay, here I am starting to bring the flange up. And I think you can see I'm stretching it. And you can see all these marks in it here. If I didn't stretch that out, this whole thing would start curling up and distorting all along here. And this would get really wrinkly. So, uh, I tipped it up just a little bit more, and it needs to be stretched again. And I'm actually stretching it this time on the power hammer instead of the planishing hammer, because I can control the hit pretty nice on that. Um, I'm just using a linear stretch die, and most of the stretching is going to occur out at, this, at, at the very outside. You know, I'll go in three quarters of the way, but most of the stretching I'm going to concentrate just on the first half inch of material here. That's where it needs a lot of stretch. It really needs to stretch out that way. Uh, and, and that will allow it to come right up without distorting anything. So uh, I, I'll head over there and I'll show you that linear stretch die. Uh, I, can't, I can't set the camera up and show you it working, but uh, I'll show you what kind of die I'm using. Okay, there's the, the bottom die. The top die is just flat here in the power hammer. There's the bottom die. Uh, it's flat on top and it just stretches in one direction. You can see it's, it's linear this way here. That just stretches in one direction. That's what we want. We really want to spread that material and that's the die I'm using and I can control the foot pedal real nice and I can hit harder or softer depending where I want the stretch to occur and that's going to do it. Like I say, if you use a jaw type stretcher you'd tear the material immediately. Uh, you've really got to stretch it out by compressing it and that's what I'm doing here. So I'll continue stretching it, tipping it up, stretching it, tipping it up, and pretty soon we'll be at 90 degrees, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. Okay, there's that finished flange, and it came out very nice, and I have the whole thing clamped up right now. I'm not going to weld this or, or solder it together right now. I'm going to wait till the radiator comes back. 
Uh, like I said, it's being recorded right now. It's out at the radiator shop. And just in case there's any variation between the cores or the size of the core or anything like that, if there's a tiny little bit difference, I can make some adjustments on the shroud. But I think you get the idea of what it takes to to build a shroud now in case anybody wants to tackle it on their own. Um, it's a lot of work, but um, there's nothing out there. Nobody makes a M38 shroud these days. And if you have a different vehicle, uh, there are shrouds available, but they're absolutely terrible, like most parts that are out there now. Um, they come in from the Philippines, and they don't fit the radiators. And, and you'd be sorry you bought it to begin with, so... Um, the only other way to do it would be to make your own and I hope I gave you some tips on how to do something like that and when the radiator gets back I'll show you the new core and I'll solder this shroud onto it put a new overflow tube on it and get ready to ship it back to uh, the customer and I believe there's a second one coming in so I may be making another shroud but again, I'm going to wait just to be sure uh, that it's the same exact as this one. And like I say, if there's any any differences between the radiators, I can make uh, I can make small adjustments on this as it sits. So that's the uh, radiator shroud build. And like I say, I'll be back when the radiator comes in and show you the rest of it. But for now, uh, there it is. And if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, tell a friend, you know, trying to grow the channel all the time, so uh, spread the word out there, and um, I will catch you on the next video, uh, where hopefully I'll have the radiator back. Okay, we'll see you then.